Great Britain, home to the house of Rolls-Royce, and London, the world's greatest city. And this is London's Mayfair, the epicentre of global luxury and fashion, where we're about to witness an historic moment. Hello and welcome to this very special occasion. I'm Katie Derham and this is Torsten Müller-Utwosch, who is the chief executive of Rolls-Royce Motorcars. And we're on our way to Bonhams, where we are going to unveil the new Phantom, the car of choice for the world's most powerful, influential and glamorous people for more than 100 years. We are about to witness what I would call the global debut of the world's most celebrated luxury item, our magnificent new Phantom in its eighth generation of a car that has been the choice of presidents, monarchs, industry titans, stars of stage and also screen for nearly 100 years now and it will be a rare and historic moment tonight. And why have you chosen Bonhams and why London? Rolls-Royce is a quintessentially British luxury brand and all our cars are manufactured here in the UK and Mayfair is the heart of the luxury goods world and no street is more synonymous with luxury than Bond Street, I think. And Bonhams has a reputation for selling some of the world's finest luxury items. Vintage wines, classic furniture, fine automobiles, and of course, fine art. So it's the perfect place to reveal Rolls-Royce's own work of art to the world here tonight. And that is, of course, going to be the main event, but it's not the only thing that's happening tonight. That's right. I'm also opening tonight the Great Eight Phantoms exhibition, how we call it, to celebrate the arrival of a new phantom. We have gathered seven of the most significant phantoms in history from all over the world. And this will be the first and only time such an extraordinary collection has come together. And the exhibition will open to the public on Saturday, 29th of July. It can only last five days, so hurry up to Bonhams if you can, and I bet you, you won't be disappointed. Oh, it sounds fantastic. Well, now you know where we're going and why we're going there. Let us go and see some history unfold. Well, here we are on the red carpet at Bonhams. Bonhams. Before we get into the exhibition, do you want to introduce us to the two pioneering founding fathers of Rolls-Royce? Yeah, of course, with great pleasure. Uh, these are the gentlemen who basically founded Rolls-Royce. I would even call it, they are the DNA of Rolls-Royce. It's on the left side, the Honorable Charles Rolls, and on the right side, Sir Henry Royce. And it was the foresight of Charles Rolls, combined with the engineering excellence, if you like, of Sir Henry Royce, that combined. Right, geniuses in mind, I would even say. Yep. Yeah, absolute brilliance on yeah. both parts. And that, it created this brand that earned the reputation right. the best car in the world. And everything we see tonight is going to be testament to that, isn't it? It's this Absolutely. enduring brilliance that's mm -hmm. uh, turned a great British brand into a really a leading world luxury house, I guess. Right, a brand far beyond 100 years now and with long-lasting legacy in that house of luxury approach. Well, Torsten, I can't wait to see. Thank you so much. Before all the guests arrive, let me take you in and give you a sneak peek of this great 8th Phantom exhibition. And in here, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the great 8 Phantoms exhibition. On display here are seven of the most famous phantoms in the world, each one representing its generation and each one owned by a very special person. And this magnificent Rolls-Royce has to be the jewel in the crown. Her Majesty the Queen has graciously consented to allow this magnificent Phantom VI to be part of the exhibition. Her Majesty was presented with this vehicle by the British motor industry to mark her Silver Jubilee in 1977 and it has been in almost daily use since then, perhaps most famously to transport the Duchess of Cambridge to Westminster Abbey for her wedding to Prince William. Another royal phantom is this beautiful Phantom IV, which was once owned by the third Aga Khan, Sir Sultan Mohammed Shah, one of only 18 Phantom IVs ever made, all of them for royalty or heads of state. And interestingly, he personalised this Phantom with a very early version of a personal dictaphone. 
but let's go back to the earliest phantom, the phantom one. We have a hat, we have a cane. It could only belong to Fred Astaire. And I'm joined by Liz Ferrin from the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, which now owns this phantom one. So tell me, how did Fred Astaire come by this beautiful car? So after a very successful career on Broadway, Fred made his way to London for the opening of Funny Face on the West End. And after it was decided that that would be renewed into the following summer, he placed an order for a Rolls-Royce Phantom One. This car is actually a Sedenka DeVille, so it's a single cabriolet, which means that the front portion of the car, the upholstery is a hard tack leather, and the interior car, which is much more opulent and where the passengers would sit, is a beautiful silk brocade. And it's just the most wonderful and sort of a evocative vehicle, isn't it? It just says Fred Astaire all over. It, it certainly does. Well, Liz, thank you so much for telling us about it. You're very welcome. Now, just over here, and in keeping with the entertainment theme, is probably the most recognisable phantom in the world, John Lennon's Phantom Five. Now, this incredible car was regularly seen driving around the streets of this very part of London, ferrying John Lennon and the Beatles to the nearby Apple Corps headquarters. Well, now it lives in the Royal British Columbia Museum in Canada, and curator Dr Lorne Hammond has joined us here, flown over with the car, for the exhibition, and my goodness, what stories you must be able to tell about it. But tell us first of all about this wonderful paint job, because it wasn't always like this, was it? It was originally Valentine Black. Uh, it was ordered and delivered in the spring of 1965, and in the fall it took the Beatles to Buckingham Palace to receive their MBEs. So when did he decide to create this amazing piece of art? They were mixing down Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, and uh, he commissioned Steve Weaver at J.P. Fallon to make the design and uh, it was approved and he sat in the garage uh, with cans of house paint and put the design on the vehicle and it was delivered nine days before the press conference for Sgt Peppers. There's so much more I know you could tell us but there's an awful lot more to see here at the exhibition because of course the Phantom is not the preserve of heads of state and film stars and musical mega stars. It's also been the mainstay of heroes and adventurers, seeing them through triumph and adversity. This beautiful, unusual Phantom III was owned by Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery, who was the commander-in-chief of all the ground forces at the D-Day landings in 1944. Now, it's known as the Butler Phantom after Alan Samuel Butler, who was the chairman of the Haviland Aircraft Company, who installed the unusual forward-sloping windscreen, which was to make the car more aerodynamic. And also, although it has been painstakingly restored, you can still see a scorch mark on the dashboard from Winston Churchill's cigar. Another great British adventurer was Sir Malcolm Campbell, who broke four water speed and nine land speed records in the 1920s and 30s. He was the first man to ever drive a car at more than 300 miles per hour. Well, this beautiful Phantom II was for everyday driving, I should make clear, but I'm delighted to tell us more about it and about his relationship with Rolls-Royce. This is Malcolm's grandson, Don Wales. Don, thank you so much. He really did love Rolls-Royce, didn't he? He did. Grandfather was a big fan of Rolls-Royces. I mean, this is just one of many that he had. It's a lovely blue, shiny example of it. But not only that, I mean, he used the Rolls-Royce R-Type engine to power his 301 car that you just mentioned, but also his boat, Bluebird K3. So it's the only engine to have held the water speed, the land speed and the air speed record at the same time. Well done. It's wonderful to talk to you and to find out a bit more about the Campbell Rolls-Royce connection. Thank My you. My pleasure. Thank you. It's almost time for Torsten to reveal the new Rolls-Royce Phantom, but before then, I have one more great Phantom to show you. At one minute past midnight on the 1st of January 2003 at Rolls-Royce's brand new headquarters in Goodwood in West Sussex, this Phantom 7 was launched and marked the renaissance of Rolls-Royce in the 21st century. And since then, for the last 14 years, Phantom 7s have been flying the flag for Rolls-Royce and they have become the most popular and successful Phantoms ever. Truly beautiful, highly bespoke Phantom 7s have been commissioned by customers all over the world using precious gemstones and painted silk and exquisite marquetry. Genuinely, they have been works of art. Well, time is now ticking down, but we're going to hear from the chairman of Rolls-Royce Motorcars, Peter Schwarzenbauer first. Thank you so much, Katie. I am truly proud to be here today to share in this historic moment. Rolls Royce is a very significant part of the BMW Group's collection of highly 
emotional brands. And we are deeply committed to the future of this wonderful mark. The new phantom, which we are going to be showing to the world in just a few moments, is a very significant landmark for us and for the luxury sector as a whole. Now, before he leads you into this new chapter in Rolls-Royce's history, let me hand you over to Torsten to say a few words. Thank you, Katie, and also thank you, Peter, for your kind words. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here at Bonhams in London on this truly momentous occasion. As I look out at this incredible collection of beautiful and famous Rolls-Royce Phantoms, it makes me very proud to be the chief executive of this great British brand the most celebrated luxury house in the world. Each one of these phantoms represents the very best of what man was capable of making during each of these successive eras. The best of ingenuity, luxury, beauty and perfection. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we will raise the bar of luxury higher still. In a few moments, you will witness the beginning of a new era of great phantoms, the eighth generation, of this great nameplate and the future of the iconic Rolls-Royce brand. It's time to leave the past behind us now and to look to the future. And it's time to introduce you to the new Rolls-Royce Phantom. So the big moment is almost here. We've been told that the new Phantom is a completely new contemporary reinterpretation of the Phantom DNA and it's going to deliver a whole world of increased presence and new elegance. So, let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, you who are viewing this around the world are about to become amongst the first to see our new Rolls-Royce Phantom. It is a creation of great beauty and great power, a dominant symbol of wealth and human achievement. Prepare yourselves, the world is about to stand still. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to present to you the ultimate luxury product in the world, the eighth generation of Rolls-Royce Phantom. When it doesn't exist, design it. Our founding philosophy. You don't just build the future, you commission it. Made in your image, not for your image. The world needs icons to lead the way. And for those whose presence has the power to inspire greatness, there is only one choice. Unrivaled, one of one. That was all extremely impressive. Torsten, let's get your initial reaction. How excited are you feeling? Highly excited. Uh, I would lie if I would not be excited. I mean, it took us years 
to bring Phantom uh, uh, into the world and today is that moment, a seminal moment for Rolls-Royce motor cars in history of the brand as well. It's only the eighth generation of Phantom and it doesn't happen very often that you launch a Phantom. For that reason, I'm excited. The whole company is highly excited and couldn't be better. Congratulations and Peter, a final word from you. I can't agree more. Rolls-Royce is on a roll and Phantom is in the lead. My thanks and congratulations to everyone here and in the greater Rolls-Royce factory at the home of Rolls-Royce at Goodwood and around the world. We should all be very proud of this moment. Earlier we caught up with the designer of the new Phantom, Giles Taylor, Rolls-Royce's design director, and asked him about the design inspiration behind this beautiful new car. I believe of all cars and of all Rolls-Royces, Phantom is about travelling in quintessential style. Phantom, in my view, should possess a contemporary yet timeless style. Our design vision was to bring Phantom to life with a heightened sense of elegance in its line and a perceivable swiftness of foot. Starting at the front, the grille is taller and larger, but in some ways less stiff, more laid back, and fully integrated into the bodywork for the first time in the history of Phantom. From here, the body of Phantom develops, and one immediately perceives the elegant bright trim that envelopes the bonnet and front screen into a single graphic entity. The eye is carried gracefully up and over the cabin. Look at the power of the front bonnet silhouette. It's nearly horizontal because the grille is taller. The front wing gently rises to present this power. It peaks just over the front axle, bringing the car nicely up onto its front wheels. Phantom sits gracefully onto its rear wheels with a faster rake rear screen and a flowing rear face treatment that pushes the car forwards. The waft line sweeps the eye underneath the car, providing the visual sense of air, or magic carpet as we like to say, upon which all Rolls-Royce passengers travel. The interior Phantom further heightens a unique sense of calm luxury and special occasion. I am absolutely delighted to have brought our design vision of the gallery to life. New Phantom offers the owner his or her chance to artistically set their own precious art pieces behind glass on the fascia. In developing this feature, we celebrate the home of Rolls-Royce's arts and crafts skills. We are defining bespoke at a new industry-leading level. Tonight, our Phantom steps onto the world stage. I hope and believe that the style and presence that you see for the first time will magnetise those around it for many years to come. Thank you for joining us on this momentous occasion, a new chapter in a remarkable story. And thank you, Katie, and of course also thank you for following us here all over the world. <laughs>